Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cougar City Podcast. Today, we have the third podcast here, and we have Bolt coming again. Uh, we just like him, so that's that's why we brought him back. Hey, Bolt, how you guys doing? We have Bob, JP, Jen, myself. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good, thank good, you. Good, good. Great. Well. So, um, I... Uh, Basically, this this new update coming out, update thirty five is has been a pretty hot topic. Uh, a lot of things have happened, and I mean we should get into it. We did get some kind of good news in the last patch notes. Um, let's uh, let's talk about that. JP, I know you have like a lot of uh, cool things to to talk about with what you think the game is going to. Yeah, well, I mean, they kind of ripped that with the empower change. You know, I mean, I guess the the resto heavies are still like pretty strong, but I don't know. I just I thought maybe I was hopeful that maybe to um, I had just this idea that maybe they wanted to up the burn a little bit on uh, support roles to make them more fun and you know lower the top end on DPS, giving like um, you know not really a, a net overall loss and damage. I was hopeful of that. Um, didn't see it come true. Um, I mean, of course, like the 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 resto heavies are still pretty strong, but with the you know with the latest update of empower not affecting only affecting fully charged heavy attacks, not medium weaves. Um, I feel like that's kind of gone now. Um, you know, as the latest well, I, I comments s- from the devs. I still think you could uh, you could do that too because I mean you don't you aren't gonna see a lot of support medium weaving in my opinion. Uh, I mean Bob, you 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 and Jen have a lot of support uh, tunes. I mean, what what did you think about that? Go ahead, Jen. You're you're the healer, so you're the you're you got the resto staff in your hand. Yeah, <laughs> from a healer standpoint, medium weaving was not going to be a thing. Like we need to hit our fully charged heavy attacks anyway to get our major mending um, going. Um, for doing it like a medium weave just to like add to the DPS from what they're taking away from DPS was going to be you know having to pick and choose when do you medium when do you heavy. Or just wasting too much time trying to do both. Um, heavy attacking is always going to be a thing for healers, so it's nice to see that. I mean, we get a bit of a buff to from empower from it, um, but still, I don't think that's going to be enough to like cover what the DPS is losing. Still, um, it's it's. I've been trying to keep up with the notes from week ones through five and you know it's everything has changed from what they started with to what it is now and it's still interesting to see what's going to happen like when it actually when update 35 actually launches because everything they said they wanted to do i don't feel like they really achieved it um they wanted to make the game more accessible and i don't see how anything that's going into this patch makes dungeons um, end game more more of the DLC dungeons and trials more accessible for tunes that aren't as, as experienced. Um, I think they've actually made it harder, um, especially with the healing nerfs. Um, the amount of incoming damage and DPS checks there is in the DLC stuff, they've made it harder. So it, that's going to really be interesting to see like what's achievable after the patch. Well, what about yeah. what about you, Bob? Like, uh, what do you think about that? Like, do you think that JP's theory could be a thing though? Still, even without the medium weaving, I would have loved to see it. You know, a, a tank being able to do, you know, even you even get a tank to do thirty k DPS, forty k DPS. You know, especially for uh, pug groups or you know groups that just don't have that damage level is really helpful uh when a zerb light first came out um i used it on a warden double ice staff tank um 
and it was it was really nice. AOE damage was was really good. It could and you know single target was. You know, Oh, you dropped there, Bob. <laughs> Bob dropped yeah. out of <laughs> It's okay. We're having yeah. some technical difficulties. Um, we'll get back to Bob here in a minute. But I mean, yeah, no, I, JP, I, th well, I still think that it can be it can be a thing. I still think it can be. I just think that would be a really fun direction in the game. It'd make me want to tank. Like, that's part of the reason. Like, I like to pug a lot of stuff. And, you know, as a tank in a pug group if you have people with low dps there's really not too much you can do you can't like like buffs are great but if you don't have a flat base number or a skill set what are you buffing like you're buffing zero so like doesn't really modify i just would have liked to seen it you know it made me think a little bit like i think when nephis put those parse videos up of um you know the reverberating and all that those 100k like mm -hmm. tank parses and stuff i thought maybe this is when they do it to the healers and uh i think it would be like a really unique like play style like bob said like 30k in a tank normally they're like i don't even know in a trial like 10k maybe 8k so like being able to like get that extra 20k you know and then with the you know the the 20 percent nerf to like dps it would balance out and i think it would make for an exciting type of gameplay maybe that is the big picture we don't know you know, this can just be the entry level, whatever, like entry patch to get it going, you know, and, you know, in the next one, we see a little bit more because, I mean, that's the thing that like everyone complains about, like drastic changes and why are they so drastic? Why are they so drastic? But let's like take one step further and look at the big picture. What if this isn't the drastic change? What if this is just a minor change in the whole scope of heading mm -hmm. in that direction? Exactly. There's still a possibility. I mean, oh, I'm yeah. just trying to be hopeful and positive what if that it's is a really the scary end statement <laughs> what what'd you say jen i didn't hear you i said that's a really scary statement that this isn't the drastic change <laughs> that they would no, i mean i think about it though <laughs> think about it everyone just assumes that like they're making these massive dra what we would quote say drastic changes this patch but what if this isn't what if this is just like a quarter of the changes and they just figured well we'll bite the bullet and uh, get this out of the way because let's face it, there's only so much they can do like in a PTS cycle anyways. So, you know, the next one Correct. we'll see a little more improvement. So I don't know. It would be really cool though to see them take the game. Zoss guys, if you're listening, I think that'd be interesting. Level, level the, level the DPS gap between supports and DPS roles would be really interesting. It'd make me want to tank for sure. No. Um, I mean, I don't mind healing. You touched on you can... something there about what you just said with, how much they can get done in a PTS cycle. And I don't know if this is like jumping ahead a little bit about the boss health nerfs. Um, one of the things I was thinking about when I saw that was they did have an opportunity to make some balancing here versus like the base game dungeons to the DLC stuff. And it seems like they just did like a whole blanket nerf. And I get it that like that that's a big undertaking job to do and they only have so much time before the patches needs to roll out. But I mean, a ten percent nerf in Fungal Grotto just means you can read a book while you do the dungeon <laughs> versus, you know, needing bigger nerfs in yeah. some of the dungeons yeah, the where there's trials. gonna be like DPS checks that we can't get through, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. they definitely messed that up. Like like vet rock grove hard modes and like Bashai and you know and then obviously like in vdsr like that's 10 percent isn't like probably going to be enough for right. probably 99.5 percent of the people who play the game and most certainly probably not any team on console but um you know i feel like that was like a drastic we have to do something again you know we can only do so much so that was probably the easiest solution at the time Mm -hmm. I have a feeling it's going to change, though. Yeah, I, I definitely mean, feel like that is something they will still need to work on is what still needs correction because people can't clear content. I think that is something that they will do. They just did not have enough time to do it right, Absolutely. right here and then. So they kind of did everything. They kind of nerfed a little bit of everything. I mean, Fungal Grotto, like, that is legit. You can re read a book now. 
and probably heavy mm-hmm. attack through fungal grotto one i'm vet dude i want but... to afk <laughs> with my short pads <laughs> yeah but yeah the, the scary well, thing though is like we have at least a quarter like three four months until the next correction round like this ha- we have to live with this change for a quarter of the year yeah, but you... for, I'm sorry, Bob, but to be honest, Jen, if the direction that Sauce is going is where JPY's theory is, you know, going, I'm okay with waiting the four months, to be honest. Like, if if that's what's going to happen, if they're going to, like, put the tanks and healers to do a little bit more damage um, to better compensate the, the damage output overall i'm okay with waiting the four months if that's the big picture bring it on sauce like let's go um go ahead bob well i i was just gonna kind of dovetail off of of what jp was saying because we're already putting like buff and debuff and kind of half dps sets on our supports right pretty yeah so so zoss is like okay you guys can have it here here you go and so I, I think that might be, a uh, you know, the direction. It'd be interesting. But uh, also the 10% reduction, it's only on bosses. They didn't touch any of the ads health. So all the ads health stayed the same. Now think this about that. Is this like that. bosses, bannermen? What, like, I'm not sure what Yeah, bosses, bannermen. So your gold bar guys. Yeah. Right? The yeah. guys that have the chevrons. Anything that has the... the rip rip yeah. trifecta. Yeah. Rip, yeah. rip trifectas yeah. with trash so, goals. Like. So think about like VCR and portals. Your crystals are ads. Their health didn't get changed. So people will have to adapt to that and change yeah. how they're doing that's true. Oh, shoot. I, did, I didn't even think about that. You're right. Oh, holy crap. Yeah. So some of this stuff may still get changed, but like you said, there's only so much you can do and mm-hmm. so much code you can change without breaking the entire game. Yeah. So and they, then if they may come back and change it, I, I we don't know. <clears throat> well, I'm already like theory crafting in my head because I because obviously like you've said it before, Cougar. This patch might be just a big meme, <laughs> yeah. and like for our team, like I'm serious. I want a meme like Draugr's rest on two, on one on two DPS with resto heavies. Uh, that Scorian that is a unique yep. buff when you proc it the second time with the 250 like unique weapon and spell damage. So like two people in that, two people in Draugr's rest healers like mostly damage it's skills. Be you a could take a group call. no listen. Yeah. You could take you could take a couple of heals off your bar for more like damage skills like on the healers because we're all heavy attacking with resto staffs, right? So yep. in theory, if we're all stacked up, I don't know. I like that's the one thing honestly the bright side it's like how can I cheese how could we as a as a team as a chill team how can we cheese this patch I mean portals might be a little difficult but I don't know there's got to be some way there there I I'm not ready to throw the towel in yet. I mean, I was a couple of weeks ago, but oh, yeah. now I just, view it, people were like... I just view it as a challenge. Like, I, I want to cheese really hard and put videos of, like, I don't know. I just want to meme really hard and be like, oh, look how exciting this content is. Look, we all just I resto mean, heavy and stack on each other. GG. Yeah. Thanks. The <laughs> like, goal honestly. of every patch is, like, you know, everybody finds the the meta sets and cheese or meta, same, same, same. It's... We, we we have to find a new niche of like what is best in slot to clear content and it's gonna be some weird stuff absolutely it's a weird patch i mean there's a few parses out right now i mean 127k like for a sork and like some of the necro stuff and the blades but you figure that's like 105 whatever like without the op like buffs from like the um from the dummy but I don't know. Bob mentioned it earlier too. I think that Atro buff is gonna help a lot. Mm-hmm. Like two sorks in the group, and everyone gets like major berserk. That's that's pretty strong too. Like that's gonna help. So that is gonna help as long as people take take the buff. So people will have to kind of learn how to position their atros right. Yeah. And not be scared to take it. But yeah. Mm-hmm. You definitely probably want two sorks now, like in your comp. I'm guessing with that with that buff would be my guess. But well, both team. I, I what, feel like some of the think? um, what I think is like some for me personally, and most people, especially JP, I know he loves this. It's like theory crafting when an update like this comes out and changes the meta around so much. 
like it closes the doors but opens the windows of so many other opportunities, right? And as an ESO player that's been playing for a long time, you have to learn and adapt. Like how many times is like you thought, oh my god, they're nerfing healing so much, her healing's going to be trash at this point. But now they wear all buff stuffs and boost the damage instead of having to run Sanctuary and healer sets like that. Like everyone has to kind of slot their own heal to make up for it. Like maybe we have to push in that direction as well. Like Fury Crafting, like you were just saying, JP, like running a whole heap of different sets and stuff to boost the damage and everyone's running Resto. So do you really need a healer? Or just hybrids? Nope. Everyone's just a hybrid. <laughs> You know, this like hybrid, we, like four buff, four buff slots basically is what you would call it. You know, what I mean? like two yeah. D- <laughs> traditional DPS that buff, and then the two yep. healers are now like buff debuffing. So you have four in your group, like, and then the two tanks being are in sitting in. in like a month or two, and being like, you need two tanks and eight DPS and four buff people. Just you know, there's no one needs real healers? Question mark because everyone else is buffing themselves and healing themselves, right? Just enough to well, stay alive. That- the but. traditional route will still be viable. Like I yeah. said, there's some parses out there that people are putting up. Like, think of it this way. I mean, people were still beating, like, VCR hard mode when 90k DPS was, like, best in slot. And that's basically oh, what, yeah. what it's probably yeah. inevitably going to end up being. Mm-hmm. So a lot of that stuff, it's just going to be, like, the new stuff. You know, VDSR and, and Rock Grove are just... And probably um, Trifectus for a few teams. So... Yeah. I don't know, maybe it might be time for people, you know, this patch, if you have a team, go back, you know, if you're a, one of those high-level teams that are progging, then I'm sure there's people on your team that are missing certain achievements. Like, go mm-hmm. back and prog a no-death like Vmall, or go get your whatever, you know, stuff like that. There's going to be other stuff to, like, to do. I don't you know? mind them, like, nerfing damage a bit, so then you have to do more mechanics and try and, I don't know, snuff out that 1% people who can, like, you know, nuke bosses in, like, friggin' three minutes in a cloud rest or six minutes but like then they got to change the pieces where like where yeah two minutes where there are dps checks and stuff that you can't pass this unless you do a certain amount of damage like that's i'm okay yeah. i'm okay with those people that point zero zero two percent that can nuke stuff i mean do you want to strive to to that point right as a well, team it's fun to like, see it don't you yeah like it's like golf. If anyone do, or plays another hobby, does another hobby, you put you golf or you bowl, right? Don't you like to see your hobby executed at like the most Perfection. highest level poss- possible, mm-hmm. just so you can see what the ceiling is, and you relate to it, mm-hmm. right? That's how I view those like high end teams on like PC. It's like it really is the amount of coordination. I, I'm sure like they could sit down and talk about how much effort in time and hours they spent to, you know, like I said, where everyone pre damages and they all throw their orbs at the same time and they all their, on. their traps are down. Everything is down. Like that amount of coordination and teamwork. I don't know. I think they deserve to like nuke those bosses and I don't really see a problem with it. it that's literally like two teams in the world. Like doing how many people play this game? Like 20 million. And there's mm-hmm. 20 or 30 people that can do play at that level. Who cares? It's just like a sport like professional mm-hmm. athletes like you bowl and how many like truly great professional bowlers or golfers are there compared to like amateurs and that's essentially like what we are i mean i know we like to think that we're in game or whatever but compared to those guys we are amateurs <laughs> like well, everyone is <laughs> yeah i mean it, it it is true there's only like when you think about it those those guys that are pushing world records and such um there's there's only really like one or two teams in each server like you know pc and a you know pc you um ps4 xbox you know etc there's only like one or two teams that are really doing that content and it is going to affect um i don't think it's going to affect them necessarily but it is going to affect the people that are trying to get to where they're well at. it's going to affect them because now you don't have a damage patch so what's the motivation for those teams? They have all their their score pushers, right? Mm-hmm. So when you don't have a damage patch, why? What is their motivation to score push anymore? There's no point. Like they're nerfed by like Zoss already like tied their arms behind their back. So basically, you've destroyed like what they want to do. And 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 honestly, and to think that like so when they score push and we watch those videos and we see all that amazing stuff, that creates interest in ESO mm-hmm. like 
for people like us to watch that. We learn little things. You're not going to have people putting out like that completely optimized, like pure information anymore. I think it's bad for the game overall. I think that they need to be allowed to, you know, crush things. You know, if, if, if Zoss has an issue with it, then you know what? New DLC, like Trials, like the w- new one that comes out with the chapter, they just need to make it really hard and make the make the PTS hard so they can't figure out how to do it until it goes like live and make them like grind it. And, you know, if they can't get it, just say, hey, too bad. Like it's newest content, right? You're not, you're not, it wasn't designed to be beat in the first week that it's out. So I think that's just a safer direction first because those week. people, it's, Sorry. those people, they create interest. They do. They really do. Like they create interest in the game. It's like free average, free publicity for for Zenimax. You know, it keeps their game fresh. So I like to see it. I don't know. That's the sad part. I feel like with this patch, honestly. Jen, Jen, what, what were you gonna say, Jen? Yeah, in in some of the dungeons they gave us, or even the trials they gave us with new content, like their answer to too much DPS was punishment for high burn it was like if you skip mechanics you're going to overload yourself on um things that are hitting you and not be able to survive it like make dungeons that are require you to do the mechanics therefore people can't just burn through it when the burn's too high um rather than nerfing people who are like more lower tier mid tier that struggle to complete in the first place Mm mm-hmm yeah, that that's, I mean, JP has, like, a very good idea of, like, you know, just let them be and, you know, make the content harder on, you know, each patch. And I've even said this before, just, like, let the damage be and make the new newer content to just get harder and harder and harder every time it comes out. And, I mean, that yeah. is that is very doable. It's, they were already doing it with Rock Grove, to be honest. Um yeah. I remember in PTS that they had to turn off um, the hard modes for Salvaka. Or, I mean, uh, not for Salvaka, for Vase and for the first boss. So people could get to the last boss and figure out that hard mode. So why, you know, JP's like, oh, well, if you can't beat it in PTS. I mean, I understand they have to kind of test some stuff out. But, I mean, Rock Grove hard mode took a little bit for people on pts to to even get i don't think they even got it on pts they got it on live why not keep doing that it it was working back to my back to my point though about the score pushing too it's like even if those people can nuke that stuff they're competing with each other on a whole different level if i have a team and bob has a team you know and we do a two minute and you know 45 second like griffin heart you know bob's pushing to get a two minute and 20 second griffin like it's gonna go back and forth with no ceiling right Mm -hmm. you just keep improving so it's not like oh we gotta we got this like crazy score we're done with eso because i think that's like their biggest fear right they don't want people if you make it too easy like i i saw that happen like in world of warcraft it just got so easy that like it became boring and 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 stale but when you're score pushing like you you have always have someone to beat. It's a competition, like back yeah, and like, forth. It, they've done not, everything not about already. The titles. That's all that's left for them. That's what they're yeah, and that's what yeah. they're striving for. So as long as there's a healthy score pushing community, people to compete back and forth, or you incentivize something in the game, like make a yeah. incentivize weekly score rewards or add something in the game to incentivize that type of score pushing. That way, even though your content is very simple and easy for them to complete they're still going to be pushing each other back and forth, right? Yeah. So they're not not—they're going to keep playing your games, Zoss, and they're going to keep giving you free publicity, and they're going to keep, like, everyone else, like, interested. So, I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's silly. I do like the it's skinny silly. twinkle, the twinkle little skin or whatever, twinkle glow skin thing for, for I do like that idea, and I think they should do it. Twinkle glow. Yeah, where if you have, like, um... And, and you could even do it to the weekly. Like, if you have the the top score in the weekly, like, your your character glows or something. Like oh, that. gives them, you're, like, you're a... Talk, you're talking about, like, uh, <clears throat> like Destiny does with their... Yeah. With their night... Night... Uh, uh, whatever it's called. Yeah. is it, That's that's what I'm talking about, Bob. That's... that's yeah, it'd be cool. It. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... Something. Like, something. I mean, like, they yeah. have a leaderboard in the game, like for people to see so yeah give people some bragging rights for the week if they're if they're in top spot they 
they have something to show for it. And as soon as like somebody beats them, it drops off. And they're like, oh, I need to go back in and run again. Try to beat that person. Well, no. Yeah, that's how you – and you, you, the game will still be healthy because yeah. people will still want to be competitive with each other even though they're blowing through the content in like two minutes. It doesn't matter. Like you're – you're facing other people. PvP, PvE. Like, let's go. Like, honestly, like you're fighting other teams. Like, if that direction, and then you just let everyone else, you know, who's just have their stuff, and you know, there, there'll be even more information. I don't know. I just, I think that's healthy. I don't yeah. think this is healthy at all. There, it's, you know, those teams patch. are. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of those teams are just going to give up anyways. There's no reason to try to push a score next match. Like they're not incentivized to like do it anymore. They have all their, they've completed all the content already anyway. So those people leave and it, it trickles down, right? There's yeah, just, no, just think of the people with the team vitality. Like how many people are dropped out of that just because of the patch? Mm. Like, Oh, getting, they've lost so many. Them. And that was like yeah. the intro to trials and like getting people mm -hmm. interested in, in running content rather than just like logging into the game and questing and doing like trading. Yeah, they had, mm -hmm. uh, I think they had, like, what, 300-something raid leads, and now they have 60. Yeah. Like, Neff has made That's a huge. video about it, um, I think, the last couple of days, saying that, like, he, the the game really messed up what he was trying to do. Yeah, that was such a good leave. idea, that project, yeah. and it's just been, like, wiped with this patch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, there's even a bigger opportunity, right? They could turn like dungeon teams into a competitive like esport. You you could, you could. Yeah, you, could. you yeah. start. Everyone runs the same dungeon. You run times. You know what I mean? Like, there's a huge opportunity. Go back that, in our like, add hard mode options to the earlier ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, could you imagine? Like, we have a team. Like Cougar has a team. Like we line up, and it's just a time based thing. Like you you queue against another team you start at the same time at the, the game tracks it you have a winner best time like wins or whatever you could have a point system where vital is rewarded yeah like uh you could make an entire esport out of that i'd watch it i'd watch like mm -hmm. nephis's team like you know versus someone else's team versus skinny cheeks <laughs> team or something like that yeah, yeah wouldn't that be uh, cool like i'd watch it on twitch all day long like i'd a, watch a them screen like on twitch and you can watch both teams go in head to head uh-huh like uh huh. Running through a dungeon yeah. and doing all their pulls, you could, you'd be able to see like the differences in the way that like, oh, they they line of sighted around this corner. Just those little technical things like in the game, and but you should, but nerfing damage like doesn't incentivize like that type of gameplay. Yeah. So I mean, like I just, honestly think like Zenimax, the drawing board. Zenimax is just missing a huge opportunity. I mean, I would watch it seriously. Could you imagine like watching two 12 man teams at a fully optimized level trying to clear like VCR the fastest, like head to head, like in real yeah. time, too? Fastest time, Not, less like, deaths. Yeah. Uh huh. Like, you know, maybe you got better RNG in one run. Maybe the other team didn't. You'd watch them like overcome like certain stuff and you could see them like in a split screen on Twitch. That'd be like awesome. <laughs> I can hear the announcer now, like, oh, he took a heavy. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, seriously, there's yep. a huge opportunity, so and that's awesome. where like awesome. other, yeah, yep, other game, other teams, other games have like done that, and like I mean, there is an opportunity. I mean, I would say PvP would be interesting, but it doesn't work, and it's it's not balanced. So like, you yeah. can't really control the environment, you know, to oh, do gosh. something like a PvP wave. But I mean, they kind of did it right. It's Remember that PvP, one? Uh, they, PvP is a whole. Didn't they have that? They, they did have. They Netflix. had a Europe. Yeah, Drake's Europe, Villa or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, they did. Maybe have they just that. I know. Maybe that was a test, and they didn't get enough positive feedback from it. But that was pretty cool. I remember, like, they raced through like the hard mode. Or it was Drake's Villa when that came out. I think. Well, but like, they could do more stuff like that. There's a huge opportunity. Here's for the it, thing. So. Um, Nefes like literally got people from Crag War, and he pugged his group out. So. They could get people, I mean, and I know Skinny would definitely be, you know, on board with this, like, getting people like that to, and have it, even if it's, like, a once a month thing that Cinemax does, like, that would be pretty cool to start, just to kind of test it out a little bit more. They, you're you right could have a you, bracket in game, too. Yeah. You could have a bracket in game where your team, like, qualifies to, like, yeah. go against, like, like a whatever a pro team or whatever you know it it'd doesn't be cool. matter yeah something like it it would be it would actually be a really cool um, like a time trial yeah but, there's yeah. like the dungeon you're you announce the dungeon and you give people time to like um 
you know, but if it's like best of three and one dungeon's known, the second one is random, and then the third one is known. So you could prepare for mm -hmm. two, and then the third, like one of them is like a random dungeon, like where the team doesn't like, you know, it's like announced that it's going to be these two dungeons, and then the third one is just a random one. That'd yeah. be really interesting too. It would, it or the first to be, two. It would have to be a DLC. Like I, I fig, like I, I don't know. I just think it's better. Like a DLC dungeons are definitely a lot better and i mean yeah if if you do the trifecta holy crap you know based on death you know speed hard mode whatever yeah, it'd be interesting yeah like do it as a trial like but you know we're gonna lose bob to that because bob's gonna be eating eu like maiming <laughs> <laughs> but you could have Role like playing. in that in that one team chooses a, a dungeon and the other and the other team chooses a dungeon and then the third dungeon is like a random one a random yeah, yeah whatever yeah. there's so many formats there's people that are better at us than thinking of different formats but that's like a i don't know i i just it just popped into my head it would be interesting you could turn eso like four-man content into an esport that'd be fun mm -hmm. that'd bring the competitive side of everyone back as well right so mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if we're clearing the content in like eight minutes it's all about like how efficiently you do it in that eight minutes or in that pull or whatever in that dungeon it would be really cool so you're not racing you're not beating you're not fighting the content you're racing another team you know be pretty cool actually I, they they did uh i mean I, I really do like that idea that's that's a random idea that we just uh, came yeah, up with, just by the way it. yeah <laughs> it's yeah, very it just random popped in my brain but no yeah like it yeah. would be it would actually make things a little bit more spicier in the game um could do that as a community as well right like do a countdown yeah. kind of thing and be like go and then you know record it afterwards and see like you got two hours to get the highest score you can on this dungeon or something or yeah dungeon at a time you know that would be cool yeah but putting it on center stage would be like i don't know Oh, obviously cool. more plus yeah yeah Obviously, get it out to the people more. You got to start somewhere, right? Just mm -hmm. like start it up, and then just be like, uh, "Zoss, this Dude, is Nefis. a good idea. You should take this." You know, Nephis and Skinny Cheeks are broadcasting. Like, yeah, Nephis can start be like up. play by play, and then like Skinny can be like the color <laughs> commentator. <laughs> like, point of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure. I don't know who would who would be better. That's a who would I think actually I think Nephis would be better as yeah. like the. The co the color commentator like the like John the Madden of ES yes. Yes. yeah the John yes. Madden of ESO for you football fans out Absolutely. there just and and Skinny can be the technical like play by play guy <laughs> yeah he, he's the geeky but, statistic guy yeah <laughs> I mean like I said that that is something that I'm surprised that Sauce didn't explore a little bit more because. Um, well, all their games do it. They 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 take their highest level players and they mm -hmm. become like ambassadors for the game through like esports. Basically, yeah, Zoss took another route. They took all their ambassadors for the game and they said, "Thank you. We no and longer upset need them." You. Yeah, and yeah. upset them basically. They, they got rid of all the um, uh, what were they calling them? Not partners, but um, class reps. They said we're class no longer reps. doing class yeah. reps. Yeah. Wait, what? I did I not see. I don't even know what, see, I I even even know what know that is. That. When was that? <laughs> yeah. When did they Zoss do that? Zoss was. Um, that was like at the big right before the thirty-five week one patch notes. Um, oh, Nefis man. had a video out saying like all the class reps got a memo. Uh, they're still under like NDAs, so they can't really like talk about it in per like in depth. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was basically, thank you for your time and input. We're going to do things differently now, and we're no longer running the class rep program. Oh, my goodness. Well, is... I know some of the class reps, like, they were repping classes like they don't even really play, which didn't make a lot of sense. And that, I mean, that's Zoss, you know, making a mistake on, on making yeah, something like class who to rep choose. That, yeah. that didn't play a class. You know, I'm not necessarily faulting the person for that, but... Um, yeah, it, it was weird that they that they dropped it. I, and I'm just wondering if they just weren't getting enough. No, uh, they were definitely getting feedback um, from people who were in depth in the game. And that that's what the class rep program was, was yeah. people that could play um, content for Zoss and give them feedback into like what's working, what's not, what's, what kind of is the player temperature in the game. That was my understanding anyway, and uh, for Zoss to turn around and say we no longer need this group's feedback is 
we're still going to accept like feedback through our forums and stuff where people can go on there. But I mean, I know personally, I don't make use of the ESO forums. I feel like, you know, if you go and you put your, your two cents in there, you know, it's, it's just a drop in the bucket for like, you know, an echo chamber and, they, they I pretty much did agree with you know the things the videos that I would watch online the feedback they were giving. They they do um, they do look at the forums. Um, I mean I I do peruse on the forums here and there. I'm not like the PC player. Like it's mostly PC players because that's hey, yeah mostly PC players. It's, it's forums, there. So yeah. But um, I mean I peruse here and there. They do listen to an extent. Um, but I could definitely see where, you know, you would think the whole bucket thing, because, I mean, there's just a lot of things going on in that forum, like, really quickly, and there's, there's people that make the same posts and such every single time, and, yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, like, come on, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's people on their keyboards on the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and, and that's, that's, you know, that's a thing. I <laughs> there's a lot of crazy crap that gets thrown in those forums. Let's just say that. So I mm-hmm. I definitely understand the whole you know hey it's probably not you know good, but <laughs> I definitely um will tell you that they do look at the forums um in some way shape or form. Now what they take out of it, I don't know. Like it's here and there. And, I mean, this patch shows you that they kind of did look at the forums and took a little bit of the feedback because, obviously, you know, they went... No, they care. They do. Yeah, no, they care. We don't... This is the thing we don't see as players, right? Mm -hmm. They're the medium. Like, they're interacting with us through the company. We have no idea what their corporate orders are from their bosses or higher up, right? Right. So we put them under... Yeah. yeah, like, we put them in an enormous amount of pressure, and people, like, really should, like, understand that. That, like, those, they they do care, and that we don't know what they're being told. Who knows? Exactly. Like I said before, I think I mentioned it before, it could just be, like, a financial thing where it's like, hey, we don't have as many developers, or, you know, we're cutting back costs, like, just like everything else in this world, and it is what it is, and it makes us easier. We don't know what the, the, the numbers add up as far as like the bottom line and, and reasons why that, you know, well, they're never going to tell us and we're never going to know. And then we sit here and like trash the messengers or the people that are in charge of like keeping us happy. They're literally in the middle right now because yeah. they're higher up. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, so everyone just needs to like chill and not be like angry or hateful towards like the devs. I mean, I mean, it's it's like a tough place. They're like literally in the middle between you know the the customer and then their bosses. So it's not an easy job at all. Like it's not you know. So and mistakes happen. Everyone makes mistakes. You know maybe I'm sure they would admit that some of the things were mistakes. I mean you may not get that apologies or that in, like that admitted, but obviously how many changes we went through in this PTS cycle, I think that kind of is an admission of a of a mistake here or mm-hmm. there. So. You know, the question is, does the game survive? Does it move forward? I just, I think there's, I don't know. I think people need to relax a little bit, even though it makes me sad as well. And it's frustrating and it is what it is though. I mean, yeah, everybody, we do take it very emotionally because a good number of us spend most nights of the week, several hours a night in this game. And we have so for very many years and it's, it's an investment time, Mm -hmm. right? It's, we've invested a lot. We've, we've subscribed we've like followed all the changes through the way we've we've changed ourselves and and then like a such a messy patch comes and everybody's just like so confused like what's what's the end goal here what's what's going on yeah and it, and it goes well, it's yeah. like one bad patch every year or two yeah. years or whatever it is that's pretty good i mean if you think about it i mean it yeah you, you just have to have faith like in the process I'm sorry, Bob, to interrupt, to cut you off there. Oh, no, you're you're fine. Um, like, I remember this outrage, this amount of outrage when they changed the healing bubbles. And mm-hmm. there were petitions for it. And because you used to be able to throw out more than one healing bubble at a time. And um, it 
you know, it was a, a it was a big um, hot that a lot of healers used. And then, you know, it came out that, oh, we're only going to let you do one healing bubble out at a time. And people thought it was going to ruin healing. And we worked around it. We figured it out. And it and I think healing actually now is in a better place than it used to be. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, so, you know, like like JP was saying, we, we have to have a little bit of faith that they're not going to, you know, you, they don't want to destroy their game. This is, this is a big moneymaker for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we have to see. We, we have to see where it goes. We have to have a little bit of faith. I'm not saying don't be, you know, don't voice your opinion and follow blindly. But, you know, in, in the same breath, like, have a little. Have it's a just going to be a rough patch. We're just yeah. going to have to adjust and hold our breath and see what happens. No, it's gonna it's gonna be a meme patch, guys. Like we're gonna be memeing. With yep, resto we're doing staff. resto comps. Like <laughs> yep. I'm already like, working on it. <laughs> like it's JP has already like he's he's talked about it. We have sets lined up. We're gonna go farm. You know, and <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm okay we're with memeing. that. I'm okay with the memes. You know, mm. as long as the end. And and Rich did say like trust the process. Um. I mean, I'm I'm not a big fan of Rich, just to put that out there. But if if JP's like theory and is that's where we're going with the game, or I'm damage, okay. Yeah, from I'm support. okay yeah. with that, and I'm okay with trusting the process. And I really do think Sauce, please hear this out. Like, think about that. That is a think thing. about that extra revenue stream too yeah. with an esport. Like yeah. I just gave you guys a great idea. I know. Know how to make I'm sure you've already researched the it. royalty checks to us. Yeah. <laughs> Bob already gets royalty checks over there in EU, so like you know. Okay, royalty checks. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but um, like I said, it's update 35. That's that has us. Uh, you know, in, in a lot of different places, a lot of people left. Um, I don't think there's going to be many people coming back. Neff has even said the last time when Morrowind came out with the hit, like the nerf to the light attacks, it took like two years for the game to, to recoup that player base. Um, he thinks it's going to be a little bit longer for this one. I, I agree with him. But here's the thing. If Sauce does it right and moves the game the way that I think it's going to be moved and the way JPY stated, then I don't think that two year window is going to be it. I think it's going to be a lot smaller for, for people to get that back. Um, it, could you imagine a game where people are fighting to tank? Yeah. Like, because it's so fun. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Where everyone just wants to tank because it's just like the most interactive, most skill intensive. Like, I mean, it is very skill intensive and interactive now, but could you just imagine taking that to another level? Like I can hit 65 K and tank like minis and cloud rest or what, you know what I mean? Or off tank and in bass, you know, like that, that just whole skill set, like where you're truly like, I don't know. And I it's, think be fun. it's going like, to, it, oh, sorry, but, but hold on. Um, and it's going to be better on PC because you have the logs. So you're like, okay, here's my logs as a tank. I, you know, did 65K <laughs> DPS in my tank. That's, you know, it's there's going to be some competitive edge there. Um, go ahead, Bolt. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's kind of going to be like Overwatch in a way. Yeah. Like just because you're a tank doesn't mean you can't do damage. Like, you could be the highest damage dealer in the, in the game, but you're the tank. In the front line or yeah, a healer. It's fun as, and it's fun as hell. Yeah, it's fun. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter what role you're on, you can still have fun doing it. So, But can you imagine, instead of, like, teams, like, just searching for that highest, like, parse, like, DPS, they're looking for, like, the highest, like, <laughs> coveted, <laughs> like, tank that can like, part. Yeah. It all, is it's setting an expectation, and, like, for me, I chose to play a healer as a support role, and I like playing that role if now the expectation is on me to not only do my job plus put out like the highest damage of, for a healer like that's a completely different game and role for me yeah but at the end of the day Jen that that's as a healer if if you could do that that's even more than a DPS does in my opinion so you could potentially like yeah 
take that game to a whole new level. Yeah, like so. I, I I'm sure other people like take it differently. Like you guys are of the thought that you know a DPS tank sounds fun. Um, a healer DPS does not sound fun to me. It's not a role I'd wish to play. Like if if the role was changed that much for me, if it was if the expectation was to DPS, then I would probably just play a DPS. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can you can go that route too. That doesn't mean that you can't. You know, hell, you you might even yeah. say, "Hey, I want to tank." You know, like Bob, step aside. <laughs> I'm gonna tank now. You know, <laughs> something like I that. Tank. If, yeah, is that but yeah, like it's it's changes like that that like it kind of ruins the the role identity. I know they're always talking about class identity. It ruins the role identity for me. And like, yeah, like it, I'm RP in a little bit. I, I like to play a healer. I like to, you know. Hey, you can have still RP. Of, like, the damage is huge, and you can still well, RP with the team up, and you're you're managing Dude. your resources and doing what you need to be doing. It's that's what the next class is going to be. Dude, it's going to be like a hybrid damage support, like a support that gains healing through the amount of damage it does. Watch, this is all tied in. Jokes mm-hmm. on us. Wait till next year. <laughs> <laughs> Like, watch. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Wait till next year. Oh, of course. Uh, speaking <laughs> of next year, um, we do have uh, the Tales of Tribute tournament that is coming up in, in August. Our August one is August 21st, coming up soon, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, the past winners um, for the tournament was Pluto. So Pluto was able to play again. But, um, I mean, both. What do you think mm-hmm. of that tournament? I, you you were That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, and it came down to me and Pluto in the last and Yeah, you almost it was won. Fun. Everyone was in good spirits and it was really good. We all came there with not the expectation to win, but just to have fun. And it was a good turnout. It was like quite a few people and we all stayed around even after, you know. So it, it didn't even really like it was like what maybe an hour and like the whole time everyone was laughing having yeah. a good time there was no like hard feelings between some other people like winning or losing or anything like that it was it was good sport and it came down yeah to like i played some other people who i learned some strategies as well playing the game mm-hmm. you know i mean pl- i played it every day playing against other people you know close to it in in the guild and stuff and the different ways they play in a tournament kind of aspect it obviously added extra pressure right because you only get, like, you, you lose that hand, you're out. Like, unless you got into the top four. And it was a lot of fun. Like, me and Pluto were quite back and forth. And sometimes you just... You can't fight the flop. <laughs> but, um, but, yes, Pluto played really well and she deserved her win. And I hope to see her in the in the next tournament. And I hope to see more people show up as well. Like, there was a, a good amount of us. But the more there, the better. You know, it was, it was a good fun. And the... And the prizes for just even showing up were amazing. Good job, Kuga. That was a, you know, it was a lot of fun. Everyone had a good time. You know, the rewards were really worth it, even just to show up. You know, yeah. that was really good. It's like, you know, 25k to show up was the entry fee, right? I'm pretty yep. sure. Interrupt here. And, uh-huh. As, as somebody who played in the tournament and didn't win a single game, I still had a lot of fun and felt it was rewarding. Yeah. But that that's that's what I wanted to do. Like I wanted the game to be like I wanted this tournament to be rewarding. Um, at the end of the day, being in a guild, in ESO should be rewarding to to each individual player in the guild. Um, so like, <clears throat> as a GM, I strive to to do what's best for the guild. And you wait, know. can I interrupt you? <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> and I would say that you're probably the best at it. And all of uh, yeah, I agree. Aww. Yes. Oh, thank you. Guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I just, I just wanted to. I just wanted to. I've been in the guild for a while, and there's no shortage of things going on. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to throw that out there. Sorry. Go ahead, Cougar. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it, it is a hard job. Um, I I want the guild to succeed. Normally, like any GM wants their guild to succeed. And this is just something that I figured, you know, this tournament, I, I always try to do something big for Christmas. Um, and every Christmas, if you've been in the guild for multiple Christmas, you know that the the new Christmas is bigger than the last one. And, um, you know, last, last year we had a housing contest. This year, this is the Tales tournament. 
I mean, five mil gold. That's that's a lot of money <laughs> to sure to, is to the mm-hmm. average person. Oh, not not know? to mention, like, how many carries did you give away last year? Oh, like how many like, silver? Like, at least six, I think. At six. Yeah. Not only that, but um, we we gave away some some VMAL carries, some VHOF, and you know, like, uh, we're probably gonna we're gonna be giving away carries. I know RPT. That's uh, RPT and Saints. They're they're really good with um, gifting us the carries for silver. They they do a really good job. If if anybody wants a carry for Voss, like, go to them. Go to RPT or Saints. They. They are professional silver skin carries, <laughs> um, but <laughs> that's all they do. Like when I, they're they're poly farming and and doing carries, and they do um, get people out of and if Cougar you City. Game too. tournament, you can afford to. Yeah. Um, so, but this tournament, you know, I I really wanted to to make it a grand tournament to where. There's nothing like that on the server yet. So, like, I really wanted that to be, like, the first guild that does something to this extreme. If they achieved that, it was a you lot know? of fun. So, I, I really I really want that. And that's that's probably why we made the, you know, the last three seats in the tournament, you know, more achievable. Because, to be honest, if, if you do have a good turnout and you end up squeaking into top four... Um, maybe like once or twice and play in each tournament from now till then, you might squeak into the, one of those three spots. You never know. You never mm-hmm. know. It's, you know, I wanted to give everybody a good chance to to get into that uh, bracket. Obviously, you know, it's going to take some skill to win the tournament in Christmas. And, you know, Pluto's a very worthy champion. So, you know, good luck to everybody that's going to have to to play against her but mm-hmm. uh i mean you and... can have a uh, tribute too i know um it hasn't been really covered much but there also is some card adjustments coming in the patch so that'll be something oh, yes. new for the next tournament mm-hmm. is adjusted to those uh card changes uh but i don't believe i've heard about any sort of changes I don't... there's not I know we, we out- there's not um we cheese. Yeah, we're we're actually going ahead with um, we're not going to allow the Sorcerer King um, to to be yeah, played. Yeah, thanks. Sorry, broken. It's so, um, it's just uninteractive. Yeah, it just makes the game yeah. uninteractive. Whoever gets ahead wins. <laughs> yep. Now another Basically. thing is I don't know if you guys have have you played the founders yet? Yes. Like in getting the, the actual deck. Mm-hmm. You know how they have their own decks. Like when do we get to do that? Like that's cool. You pick like your own patron and you can create your own deck like i know everyone will probably choose the sea serpent freaking um uh patron as their main patron but that that looks like a lot of fun i hope they eventually zoss would, that would be fun you get to make your like. own card deck that'd be great yeah yeah and then it you know at the moment you like kind of come up with your strategy and that's pretty much what you do you just play that try and hope that you get all those cards and play the same strategy over and over again but that would create like really cool and play different people with different hands, like all different decks and stuff. And then it comes more unique to the player, right? Yeah, so they, they I feel will, like that would be cool. They will have to nerf uh, some de- or some cards if, oh, yeah, if some you're cards, going to yeah. do that. Because yeah, that's why though, because there's people that don't have them. You know? Yeah, they will yeah. have to nerf uh, some cards but, for sure. But, like, I mean, like, if you have cards that the other person doesn't, you can still pick those cards up from the tavern. They all show up in the same tavern, so, you know, but still, yeah. I get that. They may not know exactly how to play Mm -hmm. that card as well as you do, but they at least have the chance to take it away from them being able to use it. But, I don't know, I I understand why they haven't put that in just yet, because people are still understanding all the decks, all the cards. It takes a long time to even get to max rank. you got to play a lot. You know, even if you're just playing NPCs and stuff, you know, that's like Jen. She only just got her founders just uh, yesterday, and she plays uh, NPCs all the time. Which she actually, I like to say that she played her first PvP match and won today. Oh, congrats, congrats Jen! Uh, nice. Uh huh. And it was a ranked match as well, so good on her. <laughs> so, yeah. I might have done a happy dance. <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> Bold, though. <no. laughs> 
<laughs> Bolt would know. Um, but yeah, so that tournament is August 21st, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, anybody can play. Uh, even even if you've won in the past, you're more than welcome to play. You know, your seat at the tournament is guaranteed if you won. So if you do get first again, that means whoever you played against will be the person that gets a seat. And if both of you have played, then, you know, it's between third and fourth. You have to knock out the rainy champion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if Pluto is going to play yet. Um, I haven't talked to her about that. But uh, I mentioned it to her, and she's like, yeah, I'll probably play still. But, um, I mean, that shouldn't discourage anybody, because, like, both, even if you get at to, to the same scenario that you got to last time... That's that seat's gonna be yours now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So. Oh, I don't. I don't mind. I I want to play her again. It was a fun match. So. Like even though you know we went one, uh, I won the first match. She won the next two. Mm -hmm. Like you know, it was it was still close. At the third game, she beat me straight up. Like I was playing from behind. But anyway, but uh, yeah, it was um, it was a lot of fun. I enjoy having a good close match. Like I'm not afraid of of losing for a good a good match. You know. Oh, Sorry. absolutely. Um, another thing is for these tournaments, you know, you can sign up with not just cash, but, you know, gold in the game. You can sign up with mats. So if you decide that you don't have mats, then, um, or that you don't have cash, you can sign up with mats. Not only that, I think JP is still sponsoring people. I know Mac Daddy Steve is, is sponsoring yeah. people. So if you don't have, you know, if you could say, hey, Cougar, like, I really don't have the entry fee. Um, just let us know. Like, we'll get you. Like, JP is sponsoring people. I know Mac Daddy Steve is sponsoring people. They'll sponsor you to get in. So that way you don't feel like you're, you know, stuck out of the game because you're you going to make go an appearance. And you... uh... What? <laughs> What'd you say, Bolt? I couldn't hear you. Sorry, I was going to say, are you going to make an appearance, JP? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe the last one. Yeah. Okay. Put all the pressure on. Put all the pressure. <laughs> hey, you know that's the way you play. That's the way you play. Man. November, November, November's tournament. Yeah, that's... it really has nothing to do with like whether you're new or seasoned at the game. It's like show up and have some fun. It's, yeah. it's the way to have some fun with guildies and yeah, play and... a game and and I mean there's... the the standings really don't matter. You don't have yeah. to be nervous whether it's win or lose. It's you're just there for a good time. And the prize support, like I will be giving out like some really cool prizes um as well like just like last time so there's gonna be stuff you know gold mats all kinds of shenanigans and like i said you know you don't have if you don't have the money that's fine we can sponsor you um it's not a big deal we had we had a couple of people get sponsored um i know bio sponsored some people in the last one uh jp um, was going to sponsor people if, if they came up to him. Like, um, I know Mac Daddy Steve, I think he paid 25k for somebody at the very end or some crap like that. I, I can't remember, but there's plenty of players that are sponsoring people to do it. So I encourage everybody to, to know. Now, do you guys want to know who won the housing contest? <laughs> Or do we want to talk a little bit about the housing contests? I know Jen. I do. I still, I haven't got a chance to see everybody's. I wasn't one of the judges. So I know there is a list posted and I'm going to go, hopefully it's all still set as their primary so I can go and have a peek and see what people did. Cause I do enjoy some creative housing submissions. <laughs> um, the housing contest, uh, basically I'm just going to give everybody an overview of what it was. Uh, the Rosie Lion, um, I've, I've had this idea for a couple of months now of making it an in-room and see what people come up with because, hey, you don't have a very, I think it's like 30 spots that you have and you have a very limited amount of, Smallest, yeah. Yeah, of spots to, to put in there. So I was like, huh, I wonder how creative people are going to get. And they got pretty creative. <laughs> Let's just say that um, the the winners is uh, first place is McPickle. I mean, it took me a little bit <laughs> to to figure it out when I got in there. Um, it's definitely M for mature, rated M for mature. 
So <laughs> don't take your for, kids. Before warned. <laughs> Don't take your kids in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it was uh, quite a creative submission, and yeah. it was a surprise when you walked in and you realized what the what was theme going was. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was it like, was definitely a good laugh. I was like, okay, this is a bathroom. Okay, okay. Um, and Mrs. Fiddle did a bathroom too. That's that's why I was like, okay, you know, cool thing. And then I saw, and I and I and I was like, "Wait, what's going on here?" And then I saw Mike the liar, and I'm like, "Oh, what a scandalous!" And if you actually, if you actually like talk to him, um, he says something that's pretty much on with a the theme too. So it's <laughs> it's pretty funny. Second place is Boss Styles. She did a Bosmer um, kind of theme. Like a little in room with a Bosmer theme. There's ivy. There's a lot of lights in there. Um, very very nice. Very well executed in my opinion. Um, a lot of us, the the judges was uh, Tiffy, myself, and Merck. And I mean, it was it was pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting. I like I like that house quite a bit, just because of how mm -hmm. it was simple, and it was it was cute. It was simple and cute. And, and then third place was MFQ Edge. So one of the MFQs takes one of the top three. <laughs> Go Edge. <laughs> Go Edge. Edge. Um, she had a Valentine's theme to her house. So that was that was pretty cute. Mark really liked that house, by the way. Um, now, Mac Daddy Steve put a guar inside his. And that that definitely got some brownie points with Mark. That was that was, that seems like if you knew who your judges were, you were playing to the judges. Mm -hmm. He might have had some inside info there. Yeah. Well, I mean the the judges were announced. Um, okay. Tiffy was the yeah. only one that was not announced. So the secret judge. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the the judges were announced. So I mean, he did play a little bit to, oh, wow. to Merck, but um, he. He did put the guar in there. Uh, Merck really liked the guar. And a lot of the houses were very, very creative. It, it made our jobs really hard, by the way. Like, go check the houses in these. Um, I've already asked the, the people that submitted to try to keep the houses as their primary for a little bit. There's a list on our Discord that shows who, who entered. Um, and who knows, I might actually do a video just going inside each house. So that's, that's a very good great. Yeah, we should use a video. Yeah, I might actually do that. Um, do a video of some, you know, going inside each house. So that with that, a disclaimer on the first place house. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was very creative. Like I've never seen anything like that in ESO housing period. So, kudos to McFickle. I mean, she did win the housing contest with RPG for the Christmas. So, I yeah. I was looking forward to her house. She's very creative. McFickle's a very creative person. Keep competition when it comes to yeah. housing. Very, a lot of very housing decorators in the yeah. guild. And it was like I said, the the houses, you know, the the inns were really really nice. It was a really close race. Um, it wasn't like the the Christmas con uh, contest. It, it was very close. Like, it, it was... I unfortunately was too busy to participate, but I did have an idea, so I'm going to save it for the next one. Yeah, um, the next housing contest is going to be in Halloween as well, so um, we'll we'll have that in Halloween, and it's probably going to be a Halloween theme, but. You don't know it's the great house. to see as well, like a small little house, like the Rosie Lion. Mm -hmm. How creative people can be with just you can only put like twelve things in there, right? It's something yeah, it's really small. very small. Yeah, it's very. But small. how creative people were, that's really cool. Yeah, and it, it like really I said, it, it was really really hard to judge um, the houses, and the reason I do you know one particular house is because you kind of want to see how creative people get with that house. Um, I mean, anybody can do a housing contest and just say, okay, pick whatever house, you know, and most, most are going to pick the ones that are like 700 things. So it's, you know, it is what it is, but 
this this was a pretty creative contest and it showed a lot of creativity from some of our players in our in our guild i was very you know choosing a small house too helps the judges because like you said people could pick like a 700 slot house and Mm -hmm. it takes you guys forever to walk through and see all the little details Mm -hmm. where in a small or medium-sized house it limits, you know, what people can do and makes them have to use a little bit more, like, competition and creativity. And then the judges can go in and, like, see it at a glance without having to, you know, tour through everything. Exactly. And like I said, we have a Halloween uh, contest coming up for housing. Um, It'll be announced in October, so you'll have the whole week of, or the whole week, (laughs) the whole week, the whole month of October to, to do it. And then after Halloween, we'll announce the winners, um, most likely in our podcast. But uh, that was that was pretty fun. Um, I really I really like that. And I mean, Jen, we'll we'll probably do a video just highlighting everybody's house. That's that's a good idea. That is a good idea. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to help. Like, go through and take a video. Yeah, actually, I might ask you to come with me <laughs> and just do that. So. It, it would be pretty cool. But um, make sure you guys to, to check our Discord. There's a lot of information there. And we have the people that boosted. Our Discord's finally, like, fully boosted. It was it was pretty fun. I was like, yeah, level three. So we have, we have a lot of things um, that we can do with the level three. Like, we have, like, emoji slots, custom sticker slots, uh, good audio quality uh, custom link invite. Um, I think it's a hundred MB upload for all members, and then like an animated server banner, which I'm working on that by the way. And you know you can pre- create private threads, custom role icons, all kinds of shenanigans. So it's it's pretty cool. We finally got that this month. So and then yay, go Cougar Town. <laughs> Yeah, Cougar Town. I know. I really, I really wish they would have let us keep our old name, man. Like it was such a good name, but you know how often I still say the old name. A lot of people do. I was playing with somebody yesterday, and they're like, "Oh, you're from Cougar Town," and I was like, "Yeah, it's Cougar City now." But yep. <laughs> so, um, but thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure you check out, you know, like our Patreon as well. Um, you'll get to come with us in into our channel not in our podcast but like just to to talk about whatever you want to talk about ESO related and you know there's some good perks in there as well but um update 35 man Whew. it's you know it's it's a thing it's a thing and we I'll have next month once we have uh, PTSD from the update and we're still trying to figure out what the heck we're doing. <laughs> I really do think next No way. Month... <laughs> we're going to put that meme. Yes. Resto VCR plus three clear up. Yep. <laughs> Just wait. And if, if you don't want to PVE, you can definitely PVP. Um, the PVP nights with scoring music, she has started out. Um, she's going to be crowning with a couple of people in our guild. Uh, in the blue side. So if you're in, interested in that, uh, hit her up. She is organizing some groups. She's really good at what she does in PvP. So just hit her up. She'll help you get you builds, whatever is needed. And the the guild is actually helping out with Siege and such um, as well, if needed. So if you want to PvP with us, go PvP night with Score and Music. And then uh, we we do have, you know, the chill team Tuesday through Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. The turbo team on Friday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. They always could use subs. And then the Monday Night Madness peeps on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, They're taking a break off this Monday, but they're starting back again next Monday. I think they need to change the name to that to Monday Night Weirdos. Just saying. (laughs) Monday night why <laughs> there's a lot I know there's a lot of weird people in there but there's hey, a lot of weirdos in there okay but they like to have fun man I'm just kidding they I'm like kidding. to have fun I'm joking I'm Jen, joking it's Jen, all jokes it's true and there's good laughs there also oh we yes have, uh, it, it turns into a little bit of cougar after dark but uh there, there's some good laughs to be had on Monday night runs um I know I enjoy the ones where we get to go into zones and share like 
daily quests and stuff. It helps us fill up our journals for like mm-hmm. those sticky little achievement things that you can only do one a day if you're just by yourself. So it's an easy way to like get some things done that you wouldn't otherwise be working on. Yeah, I think I think they're gonna do some hide and seeks in the future as well. The, um, and then they'll probably do some zone questing. Um, so I mean, it's it's just whatever you guys decide to to want to do, like just hit mrs fiddle she she's taking notes and it's a lot of fun monday nights is a lot of fun um jen has been there i've been there i think jpy has been there um but but again uh thank you guys for watching thank thank you both for coming in and um talking with tales of trivia and just like getting your overall experience we'd love to have you here thank you for having me yeah we'd love to have you here um, you know, thank Bob, JP, and Jen for, for doing this with me. Um, it started out a little bit shaky, but hey, no, <laughs> there's no power outage. <laughs> no power outage. So thank God. Um, but thank you again. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel so you can uh, keep up to date with what we're doing. Uh, holla, holla. <laughs>